Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. This time, it's Copenhagen. Bozjek was a democratic minority leader of a country in Eastern Europe falsely accused of spying for us, subsequently killed, and the blame for his murder laid on us. It's a frame we've never been able to expose, but now at last, according to Carson, one of our agents, we've got a new lead. It's Wednesday afternoon when I land at Copenhagen. I'm still in the dark as to what the deal is all about, and particularly what this new lead of Carson's is, but I don't have to wait long for a fill-in. Carson meets my plane and hustles me to a little used airstrip on the other side of the airfield, and pretty soon a transport plane lands there. Carson ushers me inside. Here, Steve. Yeah. Well, what's the scoop, Carson? We just learned that a friend of Vozcheck's named Roga has spent months investigating this case in the quiet, and he finally tracked down Vozcheck's killers and gotten a signed confession from him. Good. Now, this confession exposes the entire thing as a frame and reveals the interests behind the killings. Good. Where is it? Well, Roga couldn't get it out of his country. He got as far as the town of Margovia, and there they caught up with him. They took him to a little house there and, you know, tried to persuade him to reveal where he'd hidden the confession. Where did he hide it? Right under their noses. He had taped it to the back of a water pipe in the basement. Anyway, uh, Roga subsequently escaped here to Copenhagen in a fishing boat, but that confession is still back there in that basement. Why didn't he take it with him when he escaped? Well, the opportunity for escape presented itself suddenly. He couldn't get to it. So, Steve, your job is to go get that confession. <laughs> you kidding? What am I supposed to do, just shuffle off to Margovia? Well, as soon as it's dark, this plane will take you over. And this will take you down. Oh, fine. Now, here are some clothes you can change into them while I'm briefing you. <laughs> You'll find some phony identification papers in the pocket there. Okay, let's have the address of the house. We don't know the address. What? No, Roga was blindfolded when he was taken there. Was he blindfolded when he escaped? No, but he wasn't familiar with Margovia. He had taken quite a beating. He had to crawl in the back of a truck and hide. I see. Now, here's a map of Margovia. Roga was picked up right here. Now, judging from the length of the ride, the little house should be somewhere around this area here. Hey, that's a lot of territory to cover. Yeah, it sure is. But Roga did get one good look at the house, and he described it to an artist friend of mine. That's a lot of help. Anything else? Yeah. There's a list Roga gave me. Names and addresses of two friendly contacts. M. Linter, I. Draska? Mm-hmm. Now... You'll be dropped, look here. You'll be dropped there. Now, M. Litter will meet you and arrange for your transportation to Margovia. After that, it's up to I. Droska. Okay. Just one thing more. What's that? I go in by parachute. Yeah. How do I get out? Yeah. Well, there's a deserted stretch of border right near Margovia here. And there's a small guard hut. Now, at midnight, they serve tea at the command post about a quarter of a mile from there. And the guard has the unofficial habit of leaving his post for ten minutes to go get himself a cup. So, I hope that you can make your way across during those ten minutes. You hope. Good luck, Steve. Yeah. Hey. Hold my laundry till Monday, will you? So long, Steve. An hour later, we take off in the transport and set our course southeast. It's a bright moonlight night, which maybe is just great for a date back home, but it's strictly lousy for parachute jumping. I study my map and instructions thoroughly. I've got no desire at all for this little junket to turn into a one-way trip. Hiya, Joe. You're the fellow that's going to jump? No, I'm a jet, Joe. I'm going to leap. Oh, so you're going to go, Joe, huh? What does this thing look like on my back? A knapsack? 
Ah, uh, I see now. That, that's a parachute, all right. Ah, uh, so you're gonna jump. Well, we all gotta go sometime. Here, sign this. What? Well, you gotta sign for the parachute. We're charged out with it. We sure ain't gonna get it back. Okay. All right, Dixie, you can drop the needle now. How much longer? That's what I come back to tell you. We're getting into the coast right now. The lieutenant says for you to get ready. You know what to do? Yeah, I've been. Out the hatch, and I'm down thereabouts. You're up hereabouts. It's a nice night up hereabouts. Full moon. You can see a parachute for miles on a night like this. If I were you, I'd free fall as far as I could. You know, corn pone, you're sweet. Well, thank you. My pilot thanks you too. Now we can go home. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's you. Any last words before you go? Yeah, one. Geronimo. Good luck, soldier. And what's that first step? It's a Lulu. The air is rushing by me a mile a minute as I swing back and forth like a button on a string. I look down, but I can't see much. All I can do is hope that I don't land in somebody's lap. Then, all of a sudden, the ground comes up at me fast. What are you doing here? Just taking a walk. Where did you come from? The village. Your papers. Careful. Put them down here. Turn around. Satisfied? No. You will have to go with me. Why, my papers are in order. Yes, your papers are in order. But it is after curfew. Curfew? You will have to come with me for questioning. Halt! Stand up! Turn around! What is this? Yeah, that was close. Thanks. They have not been patrolling this area recently. We could not foresee this. Yeah. Come here. Come on. Give me a hand with him. Tie him up. That ought to hold him for a while. Yeah. On the road near the next crossing, transportation to Margovia is waiting for you. What am I scheduled for? An upper berth on a hay wagon? I trust you are fond of sugar beets, Mr. Mitchell. I can take them or leave them. For the present, you will have to take them. A truck convoy of them. You will be in Margovia in one hour. Hey, speaking of Margovia, did you ever see this house before? No. No, but I think I would know it if I saw it again. Well? You better go now. It is not safe to wait around here. Yeah. Thanks for everything. I'll forget it. It's all part of the job, Mitchell. A few minutes later, I'm up to my ears in sugar beets headed for Margovia and the apartment of one Idroska, my contact from here on in. Yes, what is it? Does uh, I, Droska, live here? I am Ilona Droska. Huh? Well? <laughs> well is right. I didn't expect... What did you expect? Oh, I'll skip it. This is much nicer. What do you want? Well, my name is Steve Mitchell. An old friend of yours asked me to look you up. Oh? Who is this friend? Frank Carson, Copenhagen. Won't you come in, Mr. Mitchell? 
Thank you. How long do you intend to stay with us? Well, that's hard to say. I just got in and came right over here. Probably a day or so. We'd better find you a place to stay. If you care for a drink, would you pour me one too, please? Thank you. Five, four, three. Your trip was without incident? Well, it got complicated for a moment, but things were ironed out. Emil, he's here. No, just a few moments ago. Could you arrange? Fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, everything is all arranged, Mr. Mitchell. Emil is a man to be trusted. He will put you up. You don't lose any time making arrangements, do you? No. To your mission. Thank you. What is your mission in Margovia, Mr. Mitchell? You mean you don't know? Should I? Well, perhaps not. I was informed that a Mr. Mitchell would contact me and I should do what I could to help. <laughs> well, I'm just the boy that needs a lot of help. I'm looking for a house here in Margovia. Oh, that shouldn't be too difficult. Well, it so happens I haven't got the address, but I have got this. Where would this house be located? Do you have any idea? Yeah. Somewhere in this area. It's a very distinctive looking house. I think we can find it. That's good. You see, the entire third of this area is covered with railroad tracks. Then the river coming down here will cut it down even more. That still leaves a lot of territory. But I think we can find it. Well, that's good news. What's the matter? The police. What? Only their cars are allowed on the street after curfew. There's one outside my room. I left the key inside in my purse. The room closet. Is it locked? I don't know. sorted back streets and alleys and make sure they're off our trail. Then we head for the area Alana thinks the house might be in and spend two hours walking up and down various streets with no luck at all. I'm tossing an occasional glance at Alana and I'm beginning to think I'm not supposed to have any luck. Finally, she takes me to a warehouse. Why come here? This is one of our hiding places. It is not well to be on the street too long at a time. I think we'd better stay here for a while. Okay. I'm sorry we've had no better luck in finding that house. You sure we were looking in the right places? Why, yes. We've covered the most probable area on the maps, except for two or three streets. And those we can look into after a while. Well, okay. What is it, Steve? Oh, a couple of things. Such as? Well, I'd no sooner gotten to your place than you put in a phone call to a gent named Emil. Five minutes later, the police arrived. Well, Emil is a good friend. 
But I decided as long as the police had found out about my place, they might find out about his too. That is why I thought it best not to take you there. Oh. Emil is completely trustworthy. I, I would stake my life that he did not report us to the police. Oh, I see. I think I understand you now. You do not believe there is such a person as Emil. That my phone call was to notify the police, is that right? Well, you're doing the talking. Suppose you answer your own question. Is that right? Such a ridiculous accusation deserves no answer. Then there's a little matter of that window shade slipping out of your hand when we were looking down at the police. Only it didn't slip. You let it go on purpose. But that was... Well, I do not propose to defend myself to you any further. I suggest that we separate. I see. And since you obviously do not trust me, the sooner the better. Maybe you're right, Alana. If you wish to remain here, I shall try to find another one of us to help you. You propose to leave me here in the warehouse, hmm? Do not worry. You will be quite safe here. Are you sure of that? Look. I don't get you. The shade. It is down. That is a signal among those of us we know we can trust. If a shade is up, we do not go near a place. Wait a minute. Is that why you put the shade up in your apartment? Of course. As long as the place had already been discovered, I thought I should warn my friends. I see. I guess I owe you an apology, Alana. I would have explained it to you a long time ago, except your attitude made me lose my temper. Well... That window shade gag shows you that you people don't believe in taking any chances. Can't blame me for being the same way. No, of course not. How did you get mixed up in a deal like this? Oh, you... You see things you cannot tolerate. You do what you can. What is your answer? Huh? Oh, oh with me, it's just a job. Is it? You know... I think your reasons are the same as mine. And at the moment, I'm very glad that they are. Well, I... I suppose we should start looking for that house again. Yeah, we haven't got much time. I'm supposed to cross the border. Let's see. Right there, while the guard is out sneaking a cup of tea. Oh, I know that district well. It is right outside the town of Krovka. When do you have to be there? We've got an hour and a half. We haven't even found the house yet. Do not worry. I will drive you there as soon as we have found the house. It is not far. Good. You haven't got any food around here, have you? It's been quite a while. Yes, I think there's some food in the office. I will get it for you. Thanks. What are you doing here? That woman. Who is she? What? Why, that's Alana. No. She's not my contact? No, she is a plant. Oh, great. They must know about us. Right after you left in the truck, they almost captured me. So I began worried about you, and I came into town to Elena's apartment. The door had been forced. Well, we had to leave in a hurry. And I waited around for quite a while, and still became more worried. I see. Then I got here just before you two did. We must get out of here, Mitchell. I have found the house that you are looking for. Good. Yeah, it is not far. All right, let's go, huh? No, first. First, I will take care of the girl. No, I'll take care of it. Steve, here's the food. Well, you eat it. Steve, let me out of here. Steve. Let's go, huh? No, we should take care of the girl permanently. No, right now I want to get to that house quick. Splinter takes me to a street a few blocks from the warehouse and to a house that sets off by itself. One look and I know this is it, beyond any doubt. you wish to find this house or what you expect to find here. You know something? 
Are you going crazy? Ilana's not the phony. You are. No. You tipped your mitt when you told me you hung around outside her apartment. There was a danger signal. If you'd been the legit, you'd have spotted it. You see, I... You've just been waiting to find out where that confession is hidden. Would you kindly tell me why you locked me in there? Well, I had to go along with Linter's gag. Linter? Is he the one you were with just now? Yeah. He thought I was going to lead him and that gang he works for to the confession. He used to be one of us. They must have paid him a lot of money to betray us. <laughs> well, he sort of fell down on the job. Because I've got the confession. You found it? Yeah. Now I've got less than an hour to get to the border. There's a car hidden in the back. We'll make it. Great. You get here sooner. Go get the others and meet me. Meet me by the border station. I'm going to take the back row cutoff. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So near yet so far, huh? Give me that confession, Mitchell. I'm sorry, Buster. Very well. You have until I count three, or I shoot the girl first. One. Okay, you win. It's in my pocket. Come and get it. Oh, no. I'll throw it on the ground. And be careful. All right. All right. Now stand back. Had his wrist locked. Okay. Let's go. I'm staying. Staying? But they've got you pegged, they even know your name. They know one name, and there are others, and papers can be forged. But you must go now. Linter may have help on the way. But you... Steve, you would stay too if you were I. You know you would. Yeah, yes I would. Perhaps someday we will meet again when all this is over and our side is won. And we will win. You bet you will as long as they have people like you on your side. 